What happens when you take one dual slot cooler single GPU GTX Titan that costs $1,000 and add another dual slot cooler single GPU $1,000 NVIDIA Titan? Yes! You get a dual slot, nope, triple slot, GPU that costs $3,000, but the GPU math does add up. It has two GPUs, and it is designed for the most extreme gaming systems in the world. Also, CUDA development and whatnot. But does it live up to the hype? Featuring a maximum boost clock speed of 876 megahertz per core, a whopping 12 gigs of memory, and 5,760 CUDA cores, this flagship video card from NVIDIA is designed to take on everything from heavy workstation compute tasks to extreme overclocking. As a result, it should be able to easily handle whatever you throw at it, right? Well, here's what we threw at it. Battlefield 4 and 4K Ultra HD displays. Not one, not two, but three. 4K displays with a resolution of 11,520 by 2,100. I can't even count that high, by 2,160 pixels. This is more than 24 megapixels, the ultimate test for the ultimate video card. Using the latest 337.91 drivers, we paired it with a quad core 4820K processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD to try and eliminate any other potential bottlenecks. And in Battlefield 4, we simply hopped onto the test range and like blew stuff up. It's a wide open area with lots of dense foliage. Is it wide open or is there lots of dense foliage wheels? You just can't decide, can you? Particle effects and explosions. Basically, a Michael Bay movie minus Shia LaBeouf, which I think we can all be grateful for. So what were the results? Well, to be honest, they were a little disappointing. With the game on the Ultra preset on triple 4K displays, we managed an average of only 15 FPS, with it dropping to a minimum, minimum of 6 frames per second. This is a clear sign that our current technology is fast, but nowhere near capable of adopting 4K displays as a surround setup yet. Which I think if you're disappointed by those results means your uh, expectations were somewhat unrealistic. Turning the settings down to low, we managed to get an average of 25 FPS with a minimum of 19 FPS. So while it's a massive improvement, it's still fairly laggy. So finally, we looked at just one 4K display. On Ultra, with four times MSAA, we get a very smooth 70 FPS with a bare minimum of 25 FPS. Turning off all anti-aliasing, which is something that you can do with that resolution, we get a staggering average of 90 frames per second and a minimum of 35 frames per second, which is, in our opinion, an excellent place to be when running the latest, most demanding games on Ultra. But for all you enthusiasts out there without a 4K display, don't worry, we have you covered as well. 27-inch 2560 by 1440 monitors are still one of our favorites as it hits a very sweet spot in terms of the pixel density. So with a single monitor on Ultra, we get a very smooth 109 FPS average with occasional dips to 43 FPS. When we ramp it up to three of those, which we should point out is actually a higher resolution than a single 4K display, we get an average frame rate of 34 FPS with a minimum of 19 FPS. Throughout all of the tests, the card reached a maximum of 83 degrees Celsius while remaining barely audible. That reference cooler actually does a fantastic job, and this is in line with NVIDIA's vision of cards that are about more than just raw FPS, but also the experience of using them. So, quiet. So what does all this mean? Well, even though the Titan Z is the most powerful single graphics card you can get from NVIDIA at the moment, it is still not up to the task of taking on triple 4K displays. The Titan Z in SLI, so with quad GPUs might be able to, but we were only actually able to get our hands on one, and who knows if we'll ever find two of these elusive creatures in the same spot at the same time. So for now, the sweet spot is definitely a single 4K display or triple QHD displays with some of the settings turned down to high or even medium. It's still impressive nonetheless, but we were all secretly hoping for triple 4K gaming already. With future driver updates and revisions, we can potentially expect playable performance, but uh, in the meantime, we'll stick with our QHD displays and uh, we'll try to, you know, try to get by on that. Now guys, 
We'll be putting the Radeon R9 295X2 through the same torture test in a future video, so definitely stay tuned there. Also, comment below and tell us, would you rather use a single 4K monitor or three Quad HD displays in surround? And finally, give us your thoughts. Based on the sort of questionable math at the beginning of this video about the whole $1,000 plus $1,000 equals $3,000 things, do you think the Titan Z is overpriced? What option would you go for instead? As always, don't forget to subscribe to MCIX Tech Tips. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.